Good morning students. Welcome to your English 1 class. Hope all of you are doing fine. Uh, today we'll start with a new poem when I set out for Lyonese or Leonese when I set out for Leonese. So this poem is by Thomas Hardy. You may have heard of him. Thomas Hardy. So before I start the poem, let me do something about Thomas Hardy. Tell you something about him. So he is an English novelist, a poet and a story writer who loved traveling and he used to write mostly about his travels. Wherever he traveled, he would write something about that place. So he was an English novelist from England, not from America, but from England. English novelist, poet and short story writer. He was born on 2nd June 1840. 2nd June 1840 in a place called Stinsford in UK. At Stinsford in UK. He died on 11th January 1928. 11th January 1928 in Dorchester, UK, United Kingdom. And this is his life, a birth and death. His spouse, that means his wife, wife's name was Florence Dugdale. D-U-G-D-A-L-E, Dugdale. His wife's name was uh, Florence Dugdale. This is something about Thomas Hardy. If you want to go deeper, uh, to, to deeper knowing Thomas Hardy, you please Google it and find out about him. Okay. Well, that is Thomas Hardy. And this poem that we're going to do today, when I set out for Leonis, is a poem written by Thomas Hardy. And this poem, the main theme, the central theme, the central understanding of the poem is about hope and perseverance and patience, having all these virtues. In my next upcoming continuation of the video, I have explained it properly in detail, so you will understand what this poem is about. Okay, so it is his attempt and it's like we trying, we trying something very hard and when the end result, when the end result after we have worked very very hard, the end result, when it is fruitful, when it is successful, that makes us very very happy, isn't it? Something which we have been trying very hard to get or to do and we are not able to do but we don't give up and in the end when we are successful in that, that gives us immense, a lot of happiness. So this poem is something like that it is about his successful attempt so in the video i'm explaining it to you in detail okay so kindly listen and look out for the new words i'm going to also explain or give the meaning of the new words if you listen carefully you will find out the meanings uh, but if you don't listen carefully then you just you will have to google the words yourself and then you won't understand it properly sometimes even the meaning of the word is not clear yes yeah, so please listen and watch the video till the and I'm also going to explain the homework or the working with the text at the end of the lesson. Okay, so if you have any doubts, you can message me. Okay, so take care and continue watching the video. So, today's poem, When I Set Out for Lyonese by Thomas Hardy. Like I told you about him in my introductory. Learning outcomes of this poem is to read, recite a poem to understand to identify new words vocabulary and most importantly to learn that hope, perseverance and patience are great virtues. The opposite of virtues is vices. Okay, Virtues means good things and vices means bad things like robbing, stealing, telling lies. These are all vices. Virtues is hope, perseverance, patience, love, kindness. These are all virtues. And the opposite of virtues, vices. So this poem also teaches us how to uh, always have hope and perseverance. Perseverance means never giving up attitude. Keep going at it till you succeed. And patience. You need to have patience in whatever you do. You need to have patience. Especially with doing maths. Every time your answer comes wrong, you throw your pen down. But that would be wrong. If you have perseverance, never giving up attitude and patience, in the end you will get your sum correct. Okay, so this is that, to have hope, perseverance and patience. Now, I just want to explain, this is out of the book, but I would like to explain this, kinds of poems. There are many kinds of poems. Now, in some poems we have two lines, in some poems we have three lines, three lines, two lines in the sense, each paragraph. Each paragraph consists of two lines. Some paragraphs consist of three lines, four lines, five lines, six lines, eight lines. So these kinds of poems are called here, like what you can see here. So a poem which has two lines paragraph may be a very very long poem but each paragraph consists of two lines. So those kinds of poems are called 
couplet. C O U P L E T, not couplet. The couplet. Couplet means two. Couple comes from the word couple. Now, a poem which has three lines in each paragraph. It may be a ten-page poem, but one paragraph has three lines. That is called a tercet. Tercet. A poem which has four lines in each paragraph. It's called quatrain. Quatrain. T R A I N. Q U A T R A I N. Quatrain. A four-line poem is called a quatrain. Five lined poem, a poem having five lines in each paragraph are called quintet. Quintet, Q U I N, quin, T E T, tet, quintet. Six lined poem, a poem which has six lines is called a sestet, S E S T E T, S E S T E T, sestet. A poem having eight lines in each paragraph is called an octave. Octave, a poem having eight lines is called an octave. And today, what we are going to do when I set out for lion is a is a sestet. We are going to do about a sestet, a poem which is a sestet. Okay, so just remember this, keep in mind all this. So let's continue with the poem now. So let's start. So when I set out for Leonis, so in here we have the introduction of the uh, introduction to the poem, the background of the poem. As a young apprentice architect, apprentice means helper. Not yet uh, fully fledged uh, architect. He's still learning to be an architect, like an intern, still learning. So, as a young apprentice architect, British poet and novelist Thomas Hardy once visited a parish to supervise the restoration of a church. So, there was a church there. It was quite broken down. So, he was going there to help the main architect to restore. Restore means to do some repair work, because he was an assistant or a helper architect. So he visited this parish. Now, parish is like what we have our church in our school. Yes, it's a parish. People from in and around Sadgao Narangi they come to this church every Sunday. We visit this church because they are living around that place. So that is the parish of Sadgao and Narangi people. So each church is called a parish. In one area, you have one church, and that is the parish. So he went to this parish. On his return from the parish, when he came back from the parish, people noticed two things about him. People saw two things about him. One was a new glow in his eyes. A new glow means a new shine. His eyes were glowing. His eyes were shining. His eyes were not dull, were not uh, sleepy. His eyes were absolutely bright and glowing. And a crumpled piece of paper sticking out of his coat pocket. A crumpled means all crushed up, not torn, but just crushed up paper sticking out means showing from his coat pocket people could see the paper the crumpled piece of paper in his coat pocket that paper it is recorded in one of his biographies contain the draft of a poem you are going to read that very poem inspired by a visit to a place which the poet calls leonis so that crumpled piece of paper which people saw in his coat pocket is the draft. The draft means the rough copy. The rough copy of this poem. So whenever we write something, we make a draft first. We make a rough copy first. Especially if we're going to write an application to the principal or whatever, something very very important, we make a copy first in rough, rough writing, and then we make it fair. So he had this draft in his pocket, and it is recorded in one of his biographies, his life stories, that this paper was the same paper which contained this very poem that we are going to read. Okay, and this place was called Leonis. So let us continue with the poem. When I set out for Leonis, a hundred miles away. The rhyme was on the spray, and starlight lit my lonesomeness when I set out for Leonis, a hundred miles away. So this is the beginning of the poem. Like you can see, there are six lines in each paragraph. So this poem, like I told you previously, it is called a sestet. This poem is called a sestet because each paragraph has six lines. So he begins with saying, "When I set out for Leonis, I means Thomas Hardy. Set out means began his journey for Leonis." Yes, when he began his journey for Leonis, which was a hundred miles away from where he was, the rhyme was on the spray. Rhyme means the frost. Frost means uh, something which is there in the cold winter. It is not exactly snow, but when it is very very cold, before the snow falls, it becomes very cold, 
and this white kind of layer comes on the spray. Spray means the leaves and branches of trees. Spray here means the leaves and branches, the vegetation. So the frost was on the spray. Light snow, we can call it, was on the leaves and the trees. And starlight lit my lonesomeness. He was alone. He was going alone to this place called Leonis. And starlight, starlight means the light from the stars. So obviously it is not daytime but night time. Yes, night time, night time stars come out. So his way was or his road was lit by the stars. When I set out for Leonis a hundred miles away. So, like I told you, he's repeating these words a hundred miles away. So, he's going to Leonis. So, here can you see the rhyming words? The rhyming words are what? Away, spray. Lonesomeness, Leonis. So, these, are these two rhyming? No. So, here we have what is the rhyming scheme here? Rhyming scheme, Leonis. And in the fifth line, we have Leonis. So, A, A, there's a A, A. And away, spray and away. We have three rhyming words there. Away, spray and away. So there we have B, B and B. Yes, lonesomeness. Lonesomeness will be C. This is the rhyming scheme. A, B, B, C, A and B. That is the rhyming scheme here. So I hope it is clear. First paragraph. Now coming to second paragraph. What would be chance at Leonis while I should sojourn there? No prophet durst declare, nor did the wisest wizard guess. What would be chance at Leonis while I should sojourn there? So he says, what would be chance at Leonis? What would happen at Leonis? Be chance means chance to happen. What would happen there? While I should sojourn there. Sojourn means stay. While I am staying there, what could happen? No prophet durst declare. No prophet. Prophet here means wise man. The wise people. They would dare not say anything. Durst means dare. They would dare not say anything. Nor did the wisest wizard guess. Wizard means a kind of a magician. Like you have Harry Potter. Harry Potter is supposed to be a wizard. So even the wisest wizard could not guess what could happen at Leonis with Thomas Hardy. So he's talking about his experiences and how he just went there as an apprentice architect and what happened to him there, nobody could even guess. What would be chance at Leonis while I should sojourn there? Nobody could guess what would happen to me as I was staying there. So here also we have a rhyming scheme, there, declare and there. Yes, rhyming scheme there. So all these will be a different alphabet. I hope that is clear. So, Leonis is about a hundred miles away. That is one point. Second point is, is that he is going there in the evening when the frost is on the leaves, on the vegetation. Star, stars are giving out their light and his path or his way is getting lighted by the stars. And the things that happened to him there, nobody could guess. Even the wisest man, even the wisest wizard, the magician also could not guess what could happen to him there. Okay, so like you can see in the picture in front of you that this paragraph also consists of six lines. So it is also a sestet, S-E-S-T-E-T. -E so now we have done about him saying that nobody could guess what could happen to him in Leonis. When I returned from Leonis with magic in my eyes, all marked with mute surmise, my radiance rare and fathomless, when I returned from Leonis with magic in my eyes. So this is what Thomas Hardy says about the time that he came back from Leonis. He's been to Leonis, he stayed there for some time, saw to the restoration work of the church, repaired the church and then he came back home to where he was. And so he says, when I return from Leonis, his work is over there, with magic in my eyes. He doesn't know what happened to him there, but he came back with this magic, with this glow, with his bright eyes. He came back from Leonis. All marked with mute surmise. All marked means all the people, they commented. Many people said with mute surmise. Mute means not being able to say anything. They were speechless. Like we become speechless when we see something very beautiful or something we see something very bad happening. We become speechless. 
when mummy gives you the best gift ever you are speechless you don't know what to say so all these people who saw saw thomas hardy when he returned they looked at him with mute surmise they could not guess even what had happened to him there my radiance rare radiance means the glow the brightness the shining it seemed like he was shining coming back from leonis my radiance rare like no that they had never seen this kind of radiance this kind of glow this kind of brightness the people had never seen it was very very rare and fathomless fathomless means very very deep it cannot be measured it cannot be said how how bright he was we cannot say that he was 10% bright 20% bright no that could not be even guessed it was fathomless something whose depth cannot be measured there are some areas in the sea which cannot be measured they are so deep they keep going it keeps going down and down and down and there the pressure is so high that you can die even if you know swimming you cannot come back up to the surface that is the fathom the depth of the ocean and here also it could not be explained because it was so beautiful to see thomas hardy the change that had occurred him in him he had come back an absolutely different person from leonis when i returned from leonis with magic in my eyes magic in my eyes means something different about him when he came back from leonis so i hope it is clear the poem yes a very simple poem there are some uh, difficult words to find the meanings of i'll be explaining the difficult words in the next coming it's coming up now so if the poem is not clear to you please let me know okay so read the poem again at least 10 times read the poem get acquainted with the poem because we may have reference to context so reading of the poem is necessary okay let's continue so this is the these are the words new words the meanings of which are given in your book you can check the book and the words meaning of leonis in arthurian legend it's a legend is not a true place the mythical birth place of sir tristram in england you see many many movies right about uh, all these old old history yes we see those movies these are all mythical places is not uh, uh, real just myths people just uh, generation to generation we got these stories from there some of them have are true but some of them are not some of them are just made up so this leonis in arthurian legend the mythical birth place of sir tristram in england believed to have been submerged by the sea here an imaginary place so yes it is true that thomas hardy may have gone to a certain place but he does not want to reveal the exact uh, place here he does not want to reveal so he just gave a name to this place called leonis and this place is supposed to have been submerged by the sea and it it was land before and it became or it came under the sea hundreds of years ago next one is rhyme like i told you in my explanation rhyme means frost like you see early in the morning especially in winters in guwahati sadga anywhere you go you will see kind of white kind of layer on the leaves the spray means leaves and branches of trees foliage foliage means the plants dust here means dead poetic word for dead be chance means happen or chance to happen or something that could happen so john means stay is all very very old english okay so john means to stay radiance means to glow to shine to be bright and fathomless so deep that the depth can't be measured it is so deep that we cannot say how deep it is 1 meter 2 meter 3 meters 100 meters 1 kilometer how deep going in vertically not horizontally but vertically so it cannot be measured that means the brightness in his eyes could not be measured continue watching please now working with the poem these are the questions mentioned in in your books working with the poem in the first stanza find words that show so first question work only with the first stanza and the first stanza pick out a word that shows that it was very cold just pick out one word number 2 that it was late evening which word shows that it was evening time number 3 that the traveler was alone is very very easy find one word in paragraph 1 which shows us or which tells us that the traveler was alone 
Now number two, something happened at Leonis. It was improbable, impossible or unforeseeable. Which one of this? Unforeseeable means could not see the future. Impossible means could never have happened. Improbable cannot happen. So which one of this? Now pick out two lines from stanza 2 to justify your answer. Now you pick out A, B or C from here. Number 2, pick out the word A, B or C. Which one you think happened there? Yes. And then you have to pick out two lines from stanza 2 to justify. Tell, tell us why you picked up this word. It is very clearly mentioned in paragraph 2. Okay. Now 3. 1. Read, this, read the line stanza 3 that implies the following. Everyone noticed something and they made guesses but didn't speak a word. Which lines in the poem mean this? Everyone noticed something and they made guesses but didn't speak a word. Right? Next one, number two. Now read the line that refers to what they noticed. Which, what did they notice? Now it's mentioned here read. In number three it's mentioned read and read. But then you write. Write the line that refers to what they noticed. Okay. Now this is your homework. If you still have any doubts, please message me. Okay. That's all for today. Have a good day. Bye-bye.